one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I, you know, I don't normally do a video midweek, but I, I, I felt compelled to do this one. To get right into the meat of the matter, um, uh, on a lady's page there on Facebook, she, she posted a message about what we can do right now. You know, what, what can we as black people in the community do to move ourselves along, to, to try and progress? And, you know, i I got to admit, and, you know, a bit of a confession, I was a bit flippant in my response. I said to her, look, there, there's nothing we can do. You know, we, we, we had every warning that we were going to be in this environment. You know, we had Windrush. We've had years of overt racism by people like Boris Johnson. And, and, and what did we do? You know, we, we voted for him. And, um, you know, her response was, you know, Paul, that's, that's very defeatist. That's shutting down the argument. And, you know, I, I guess the mood I was in, you know, I watched um, Sitting in Limbo last night. And I, and I got to tell you, it was a painful watch. The mood I was in was really, we've lost. You know, we've been shafted. You know, I, I, I couldn't believe that after something like what happened to the Windrush people, which was, which was laid out so bare, that we were able to, to see our way, black and white, by the way, to, to, to vote in a party like the Conservatives at a time like this, you know. Um, but that response I gave her sort of rolled on my mind all day. And I have to admit that she was right. That that, that response was, was not adequate. It, it was not, not a response that certainly we as a people need right now. And... Um, I've been thinking about it long and hard and I just have a couple of bits and pieces that I'd like to run through which I think might help us as a community and I, and I want to say now that none of this de depends upon unity you know we, we, we I think we slow ourselves down because we we, we we keep thinking that without unity nothing can be achieved and sure we can achieve great things with unity but here's a couple of things that I think we could be doing now while we wait you know, and, and the first one speaks very much about unity. And the first thing I'd like to suggest is stop focusing on what other people are doing or are not doing. You can't control their actions. The only person's actions you can control are yours. So you step up. Don't, don't wait for anybody else. The, the second thing is it's a bit broader. And, and this is certainly going out to the younger people. Get married. Build a healthy family. Because strong families build strong communities and that's the only way we're going to be able to fight whatever lays ahead and that that's by having strong families ready to provide good strong intellectually financially and educationally strong people and if you're out there messing around and detracting someone who could make a great husband or a great wife leave them alone step off yeah leave them for someone it's better that they're single than they're with someone who's just a time waster the third thing I'd like to say comes to really from a deep, deep place. And that's about multiple streams of income. Look, I know some of you have this one big paycheck and some of you have none. But the bottom line is everybody needs to have multiple streams of income. Back home, we're about saying one, one, quick, a full basket. But it's not only that it fills baskets. And this is important. It's that you are not financially vulnerable and doesn't matter how high that one stream of income is, it's a single point of failure. If you lose it, you've lost everything. And look, in these days, it doesn't take long for losing that one stream of income to bring you to your knees. Develop multiple streams of income, please, I beg you. On top of that, if you do have a high income stream, that's a great opportunity to be invest. We don't need another car. You don't need another pair of shoes. You don't need all of that. What you need is another source of income. Use your financial wealth to leverage that. Yeah? The fourth thing is about your education. And I'm not talking about the education that you get in schools. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the education that you can get for yourselves. There are so many courses going on that teach us about the historical context to why we are in the position we are in. And within those courses lies the answers for how we get out. Please educate yourself, educate your family, hang out with people who are on the same journey. Yeah, I'm not saying we shouldn't chill out and relax and have fun, 
But I am saying that we should be educating ourselves and don't just see and look at the things that have, you've always believed in, the things you've always known and the things you say, you know, this is what I believe. Challenge yourself. Ask yourself that deeper question. Listen to someone who has a totally different view from yours. You might learn something. The fourth thing, I think it's the fourth, I can't remember, doesn't matter. But the next thing I'd like to tell you is about leadership. Stop waiting for leadership. Too many of us are saying, well, who are the leaders? Who's going to speak for us? Who's stepping up for us? It doesn't have to be that way. You know, military strategists, you know, have, have spent years trying to figure out if centralised leadership is the way forward. The Vietnamese War was won because what they did, they subdivided their leadership down to almost two-man units. Be the leader that you're looking for. You might be surprised how good at it you are. The last thing I'd like to talk about is something that's very dear to my heart. Give to a charity. And look, when I say give to a charity, I want you to understand that I'm not just talking about money. Yeah, they need your money. But there are two other things that you can give to a charity to help make a hell of a difference. You can give of your skills and you can give of your time. Both of them are as valuable as money, if not more so. Think about it. You don't have to be giving money. You don't have to be worrying about, oh, how much do they take out of the pound? And you don't even have to do it with a formal charity. You, you can walk down to your local charity. You can walk down to your local elder's house, sit down and read a book. You might learn something from them. So that's it. Those are my points that I'm saying to us as people in response to that post today on Facebook. We can do things differently. Maybe out of that will come the leadership that we're talking about. And maybe out of that will come the unity. I didn't plan to do this video, so forgive me. It's a little bit rough and ready. But this is it. This is me just talking to you as a black man to my black people. That's it. That, that's all I want to say tonight. Um, Sunday, we're having another show on the People Talk, 2 p.m. UK time. Please join us. We're going to be talking about, you know, topics of the day. This thing, I think we're talking about fatherhood this week. And I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys and sharing with the people who will be on the show. That's it. My name is Paul Lawrence. Thank you again for listening.